Aloha. I hope I have the camera straight. It's kind of hard to tell when it's level sometimes. And here I am. Let me just straighten everything out. Da, da, da. Well, here, I need a trim again. I should stop and try and trim that, especially like over the ears. Okay, so today there was another study in the paper. Um, a while back I did a study that talked about how having one to two drinks, moderate drinking, one to two drinks a day was good for you. It was good and helped prevent cancer. And I kind of said, what the hell? But, you know. And I will link that down below. But now there is a study that says, no, uh-uh, zero drinking is best for you. <laughs> like, we didn't know that. But this study was published by the British Journal of the Lancet, which is, you know, like um, the American Journal of Medicine, but, you know, in Britain. Uh, but it's of that caliber, very respected, very knowledgeable. Um, and let's see, the study was analyzed data from the 2016 Global Burden of Disease Report to determine levels of alcohol use and its health effects in 195 countries for males and females aged 15 to 49 between 1990 and 2016. Okay, so um, then it says it accounted for about 3% of deaths in women and 12% of deaths in men, and that's just alcohol in general. Um, excess in the United States, uh, excessive alcohol use led to approximately 88,000 annual, annual deaths between 2006 and, 2000, and 2010. And that's per the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, so where does it say? Uh, oh, and the study was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, you know, which they've since Bill Gates grew up and became an adult, he's done some good stuff. So. <laughs> You know, I, I think we can credit Melinda for a lot of that. Uh, let's see. I, I didn't highlight like I usually do. I usually highlight what I want to go over, and I, I didn't do that this time. Okay, moderation. Let's see, moderation is defined, defined as up to one drink a day for women of all ages and men older than age 65 and up to two drinks a day for men age 65 and younger, according to the Mayo Clinic. One drink is considered 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, or 1.1 ounces of 80 proof spirits. And then, um, let's see, here it is. Um, the study contradicts other health guidelines, mm -hmm, which espouse health benefits associated with consuming up to two drinks a day, saying any benefits were offset by the risks of developing 23 other alcohol-related diseases, specifically cancers, or dying from alcohol-related accidents. And so based on the results, the researchers recommend that public health campaigns revise their message to include alcohol abstinence and focus on reducing overall drinking. Okay, that's what they've been doing for years. And then, you know, one study comes out and says it's okay to have a couple of drinks and everybody just believes it because they want to get drunk. I don't know. Um, so I went to the study itself. Um, you know, I went to the Lancet and looked up the study. And so what it said, it goes over and you can... I'll link the study down below as well. And it says evidence before the study. And it says that um, researchers recognize that alcohol use as a leading risk factor for premature death and disability. Some evidence suggests that low intake might have a protective effect on specific conditions. Um, then, Uh, 
again, sorry I didn't highlight. But the added value of this study is that um, they consolidated individual and population level data sources to estimate alcohol consumption levels among current drinkers. Then they developed a method to adjust population level consumption for alcohol consumed by tourists. Okay, living in a big tourist area, that's a lot of alcohol. <sighs> um, they improved pre-existing methods that account for unrecorded population level consumption. And they did a new systematic review and meta-analysis of alcohol use and 23 associated health outcomes, which they used to estimate new dose, new dose response curves of relative risk. Fifth, using the new relative risk curves and a new analytical, analytical method, they estimated the exposure of alcohol consumption that minimizes an individual's total attributable risk. Okay, so the implications of all this new data that they're mining, and that's what they're doing. They're mining data from other reports. Um, the total attributable burden of alcohol use was larger than previous evidence has indicated and increases monotonically with consumption. I love that word, monotonically. Oh, I had to look it up to make sure I knew what it meant, but since I love learning new words, that was awesome. And monotonically simply means you have one set, you get a, a total from that, so you add all of that together to get your new total, and then you get all of, add all of those to get your new total. So it's like in grade school when we learned one plus two equals three, one plus two plus three equals six, one plus two plus three plus six equals 12, and you keep going. In this case, it's talking about one drink a day. So you're talking about your one drink, then your one drink a, the next day is two drinks, then your one drink plus one drink plus the third day. So you're actually, you've got your two drinks, then you add your third drink, then you add your fourth drink. These are all totaling. Your, it's not like one drink a day, but by the time you get to the fourth drink, that's like four drinks a day not four drinks a day, but it's like, it, it just keeps building and building because the alcohol is building in your system. So, um, where was I? Yeah, increases mo monotonically with consumption. So basically, the more you drink, then the bigger, or the, the what am I trying to say? The more you drink, the more likely you are to have health-related issues. And it's not just based on how much you drink at one sitting, it's based on how much you drink during a lifetime. So, um, based on weighted relative curve risk curves for each health outcome associated with alcohol use, the level of consumption that minimizes health loss due to alcohol use is zero. And then I went down to there's well I printed it out but <laughs> the section that has findings and it specifically talks about cancers. I really should have highlighted this, boy. Um, for populations aged 50 years and older, cancers accounted for large a large proportion of total alcohol attributable deaths in 2016, constituting 27.1% um, of total alcohol attributable female deaths and 18.9% of male deaths. That's quite a lot just for alcohol-related cancer deaths. Um, the level of alcohol consumption that minimized harm across health outcomes was zero standard drinks per week. And the interpretation that, you know, from all these findings, I mean, there's more to the findings than just that. That was just the cancer-related. Alcohol use is a leading risk factor for global disease burden and causes substantial health loss. 
we found that the risk of all-cause mortality and of cancers specifically rises with increasing levels of consumption, and the level of consumption that minimizes health loss is zero. These results suggest that alcohol control policies might need to be revised worldwide, refocusing on efforts to lower overall population level consumption. So basically they're going back and telling us what they've been telling us for years and years is that zero consumption of alcohol uh, for health reasons, but you know they kind of had to backtrack because they did this it's okay to have one or two drinks thing. And so now they're going back and saying, no, 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 we got that wrong. You can't do that. <laughs> so on one hand, it's kind of like, duh. And then on the other hand, it, it's like, okay, this is making more sense. So I will link these articles below, or, you know, I'll link the, the video I did before, and then I'll link these, the Lancet, study and you can make up your own mind if you want to have a drink or not i i don't think an occasional drink is going to harm you but if you have that regular drink that's my that might be what does you in uh, and again there's no certainty you're going to get cancer if you drink it's just one of those things that it might increase your odds of getting cancer if you're if your genetics are prone to it that might be the tipping point who knows I still don't know how I got mine so you know and I thought about taking like the one two three what is it one one two three and me one of those genetic tests they do a health analysis on one of them and so I thought about taking that to see if anything odd pops up you know, and maybe there's something in like the family history DNA kind of stuff that would tell me something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I can't afford the money right now to do the test, so I'm going to have to wait for that. But um, that's, that's also another thing that, you know, if you are concerned about it or if you're curious as to why you've got this cancer like I am you know why me why how did this happen my you know my parents didn't have cancer you know other families members haven't had cancer uh, that I'm aware of I'm not real close with distant family members and I was an only child so it's not like I have close family um, but I, I don't know you know I'm not sure where this came from so the one thing that I thought I if I, I thought if I ever got cancer it would be brain cancer because I actually did have that on both sides of the family on the maternal and the paternal side and so I thought you know that'll be the one I get But that would be too easy. Just get brain cancer and die and have it all over with. No, this you got to live with and deal with it. That makes it much, much harder. So that is my story for today. And you can make your own decision on drinking. <laughs> I'm still going to have the occasional beer. You know, if I go out with friends or whatever, I'll, have, I'll lift a drink and probably toast my breast cancer <laughs> I don't know <sighs> but uh, until next time aloha